Mike Felicio from Solo Mode Games. Today I'm going to do a solo playthrough for the game Santa Maria. This is a game that was released at Essen this year, 2017, and it's a dice placement, kind of dice as workers, resource management, tile laying. There's a lot of things going on in the game, but the actual structure of a turn is pretty simple, and I think you'll get a pretty good idea on that as we head on over to the table. So why don't we go and do that right now? Okay, here we've got most of the setup of a solo game of Santa Maria, a game that uh, was released at Essen this year. This is actually a borrowed copy of the game from a friend who had it brought back from Essen. Um, the differences between the multiplayer and the solo are very, very minor. Um, it says in the setup that you are going to have three blue dice per player. So in this case, just three because of it's a single player game and three white dice for, per player. And so, of course, we're going to have three. The main difference is that we're going to be going for a target score, which in this case is 100. And if my <coughs> excuse me, uh, previous performance is any indicator, uh, I will come nowhere near that 100 points. But let's see if I improve. Um, the other difference is that you're going to be using what they call in the standard game the advanced rules for setting up the colonies. And the, the differences there is that you use the B side of the board rather than the A side. And you draft at the beginning of the game these four, oh, let me see what they're called, town hall maybe? Yes, the four town hall tiles. And so I had randomly placed out these four tiles and four scholar tiles that were placed underneath them. And I chose one of those sets of four. And in this case, what I chose was this particular town hall tile, which has a religion action and a colonist there, which I'll uh, explain in a little bit. I think those are called colonists. Person. And this special ability that I'm going to have throughout the game, the scholar tile. And what this special ability allows me to do right from the very beginning of the game is it allows me to use my blue dice in columns as well as rows. Normally the blue dice are used to activate rows, as you can kind of see along the left side of the board here, and the white dice are used to uh, activate columns. But I've got this special ability that allows me to use my blue dice either for rows or columns, and that's pretty nice. So now I need to place this somewhere on my board, covering up two blank spots. Actually, I'm supposed to roll these dice first because it says in the rule book that that might have a play on where you place this. So let me go ahead and roll these. This is what you're gonna do at the beginning of a round. I've got a four, five, and a six, so you just place those underneath the corresponding spots on uh, this main board, all right? And so with that being in mind, knowing that I can activate these three rows, um, first thing I'll do, let's see here, let's go, let's just put it right up at the top here. Do I want to do that? Sure. We'll put it right here at the top. I have no confidence that that is a strategic or good spot, but that's where it's going. Okay. So I've placed that. The other thing I'm going to do is take one of these blue dice, roll it. It's a six. So I'm going to place it next to my six spot here on the board. The other part of uh, setup is I get two wood and three uh, coins. All right. This is the shipping area. These were randomly placed out. There are always the same four. They're denoted with the orange sails and you just put them in random spots. So this is the, uh, the, the order that they uh, ended up in. And so I'm ready to begin. So I'm gonna kind of explain as I go along, but generally speaking, the different types of actions you can take is you can activate buildings on your board individual buildings. These are all buildings, okay? Uh, if uh, these road spots where a little person is with roads, those are not buildings. Those can't be activated. Any of these pre-printed and some that I'll be able to get over here and put onto my board can be activated. When you activate them with coins, it's a one-time use. You go ahead and place it over it and you activate that building. The first one costs you a coin. The second one would cost you two coins and it's always one more uh, than that. So the first building, one coin, second building, two coins, third building, three coins. And if you have more, you would just keep doing that. That's one action you can take is activating with a coin. The other thing you can do is spend a die to activate an entire row or column. And so in the case of the white dice, I can get this four, 
put it here and activate this whole row from top to bottom. With the blue dice, it's from left to right. Now, I happen to have the ability that I could use this six to activate this row or this column. That's just a special ability I have there. Up at the top, we have some randomly seated scholar and, oh, what are the other ones called? Scholar tiles and bishop tiles. There's three that are gonna be out there for each the whole game. These uh, bishop tiles are end of game scoring. These scholar tiles are uh, tiles that I can get abilities that will go throughout the game and I'll explain them as they go along, all right? But the basic idea is that you're going to be either spending coins or spending dice to activate uh, items on your, on your board. Free actions, F-R-E-E, -E, not three, free actions that you can take are uh, you can sell resources, you can sell basic resources for one coin, uh, or these um, advanced resources for two coins. You can also buy the basic resources for three coins. So those are the free actions you can do at any time. You can buy or sell those resources, okay? So with that being said, let's go ahead and get ourselves ready for this first turn. Okay, so first turn over three rounds, or three years as the game calls it, is played over three years. Um, one of the things I also wanna do is expand my colony, get tiles from this pool and put them into my board so that they can be potential actions that can be unlocked. And so, there's one actual little errata here. On the back of these tiles, it shows a wood and a grain, but it really is supposed to be two wood. It's printed correctly here on, the, on this main board and in the rule book. For a small two spot tile, it costs two wood. For a large tile, it costs two wood and a grain. And so I'm trying to consider, do I want to potentially activate this row to go ahead and get this grain so that I can then uh, get a large tile or do I spend my three money to just buy a grain and therefore be able to put one of those large tiles here uh, and, and be able to activate. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna spend my starting three coins and I'll go ahead and get a grain which goes into my little storage area. I'm gonna end up spending it right away. You can ev only ever have a maximum of three of any resource here. Um, so now I'll spend the two wood and a grain, which is shown here, to get one of the large tiles that I'm gonna go ahead and put on my board. I've got many options here. Um, I can get sugar and an exchange action here. I can get grain. You can kind of, you can't really see some of these off camera, but if I put them on my board, I'll explain. Um, I do like shipping actions. That allows you to ship goods here for um, end of round and end of game points. These gems are pretty powerful as well. Um, I know five and six is gonna activate. Maybe I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'll get this tile. So this gives me a wood gathering action and a shipping action here, all right? Okay, so I do need to get some resources so that I can use these shipping actions. So I think what I'm gonna do, hmm, I've got four, five, and six. I can ship this wood if I activate this. I can do a religion, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna activate this row, or this column, excuse me, this column five. And so you do them in order from top down. The first thing is a religion action. So in the religion action, you just simply move forward on the religion track one space. As you do this, you're gonna unlock monks, unlock extra blue dice uh, to potentially have up to three blue dice. And these monks will give you uh, some actions that I'll show you, give you some abilities, okay? Now, anytime you move up on the religion track, if you have a grain and choose to use it, you can spend one grain to move up an extra. I don't have that option. So that was the religion. Now I get myself a wood. Here I get a grain and a conquistador action. So let me get this grain. And then on the conquistador track, you just move up one here as well. At the end of this year, in the solo game, I wanna be past this first little tree. If I do so, I get four points. At the end of year two, if I'm past the second tree, I'll get five. And at the end of the third round, if I'm past this tree, I'll get six. 
All right, now, whenever you activate a row, you place the die that you used on the last activated building. So in this case, that was there, the grain and the conquistador. All right, so I've used that. Now I have a wood and a grain that I could use for shipping. All right, I think what I'm going to do is, um, uh, this, this gives me a lot of stuff here and I'd be able to ship that. Yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to activate this six building. First thing it's going to do is give me a gem. Then it is a shipping action and I'm going to go ahead and ship this gem that I just got. So what this does is this is going to now at the end of the game, give me two points. Those little happy faces indicate points. I flip it over to its backside and I put it in the corresponding row, which is right here. All right, and I immediately replace that with one from the non-starting stack. All right. So I shipped, and now the last thing is a religion action, and I could go ahead and pay that to unlock another blue die and a monk, and I think I'm going to do that. So I go there, I get the second blue die, which I roll, gives me a five, and I put this on the, oh, this, that was a six, on the last activated building. All right. So let's see here. I don't have any money. Oh, did I, I should have paid to ship. I should have put that back to the general supply because I shipped it. Okay. I don't have it anymore. All right. So now I've got a wood left that I can use to ship there. If I choose to, um, I'm going to definitely want to activate this uh, ability here because it's going to um, get me past that first tree to give me the four points. All right. Oh, this monk. I almost forgot. When I cro crossed here, I got a monk. Now, with this monk, I have some options. I can either place it into one of these one-time use uh, resource acquisition spots. Here I can get two sugar, here I can get two gems, here I can get a gold, which is a wild resource, or here I can immediately get three victory points, or I can place it into one of these six spots up here. These give me ac uh, abilities that I can use throughout the game. This one, if I place my monk here, for the rest of the game, when I place a shipping tile, I can pay coins to move them up or down. To a different spot. Why would I want to do that? Well, they give you abilities at the end of the round, and also for every complete row, uh, or excuse me, every complete column, at the end of the game, you'll get points. So you might want to manipulate where these are put. This one um, will allow you to spend two coins at any point to get a wood or a grain. This one will allow you at any point to spend three coins to get a uh, sugar or a gem. So basically it'll let you, if you go here, you can buy these basic resources for one less. And if you go here, you can buy these for three coins. Normally you would not have the ability to do that. Okay. And so let's see here. What do I want to do? I kind of want to have the ability to manipulate where my shipping goes. So I'm going to go ahead and put that there. And then at the end of the game, I'm also going to score two points. All right. So I've done that. Um, I'd love to be able to get more uh, tiles here so that when I activate the four, I could... Um... So let's do this. This is probably not the most efficient thing to do, but I'm going to spend my six, and the last building gives me a wood. So now I've got two wood. I can spend these two wood immediately to get one of these small tiles and I'm going to use that to put in my four so that I can activate. When I activate, I'll get more, more things. The other thing that I should be thinking about is at the end of the game, if I choose to go to one of these spots, this one gives me points up to a maximum of 12 at the end of the game for every villager or whatever these people are called. I'm going to call them villagers that are connected to my uninterrupted roads connected to my town hall. So I can get up to 12 points at the end of the game. This one is... Uh, a maximum of 12 points for every uh, building on an uninterrupted road connected to my town hall. So right now, um, I actually don't have any buildings uninterrupted connected to my town hall. That was probably not a great place to put it. I do have one person up to a maximum uh, of 12 points. So maybe I want to be thinking about those um, if I choose to go that route. Um, so 
I got my two wood, so I do want to pick one of these. Let's... I'm trying to think which one of these is going to be most helpful to me. I could use... Well, I think I need to get more stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to put this because this is going to give me another person connected to my town hall and I can get a gem. All right. So I've spent my two wood to get that. I'll go ahead now and I'll activate this uh, uh, column. So I get a gem and I get a wood and I get a conquistador action, which now is going to take me past that spot. And I place that on the last activated spot there. Now, um, this five would be useless to me normally because there are no un, uh, taken, un, unopened, there are no open spots on this row, uh, but I can, because of my ability, use this as a column. And so now what I'm going to do is make it go down this way, get a religion and get a wood. All right. And place that there. And now I have the option to get another um, tile if I want to do so. And it may not be a bad idea. But I think I'm going to hold off. I think I'm going to hold off. All right, so now what I'm going to do is retire. And when you retire, you move this marker to one of these spots. You can either get two coins move up on the religion track, which in this case would get me a monk, which might be nice, move up on the conquistador track, which in this case would get me a gold, which is a wild resource, or do a shipping action. Um, and a shipping action at the end of the round gives you some abilities as well. So right now, the only thing I could ship would be a wood. I don't know if I want to ship just yet. Coins would be nice because I don't have any. Um, Religion would be nice because then it gets me closer to my third blue die and it gets me a monk. I think I'm going to do that. I'll go here to religion. I'll move up here. That's going to give me a monk. And I'm going to put this on... Let's see. I'd like to ship... I'd love to ship that. And that is a grain and a sugar. I've got grain and sugar right here. So I don't even need to mess with that. So let's... Go ahead and oh, do I want to go for an end game or do I want to go for? Let's go ahead and get a couple of gems. Those are always kind of hard to get. All right, so now I've got my maximum. Actually, no, I don't want to do that because I, I can't get gems on my board. Let's just get a gold. All right, so we're getting a gold. Okay, so. Now, since I have retired, we are at the end of the year. And what we do is we get points based on the Conquistador track. Now, in the solo game, if you pass that first tree, you get four points. So I'll go ahead and get my three and one for four. Put those right there. And then this resets. The Religion track never resets. The Conquistador track resets at the end of every year. All right. Um, the dice go back to the pools. We're gonna re-roll those uh, at the beginning of the round. These tiles all get discarded. So I'm gonna discard these tiles and we're gonna get five of each new. So we're gonna get five more. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, we've done that. Um, now we get the white dice roll them. So we've got a three, four, and a five. All right. I'm going to roll the uh, blue dice. I got a four and a five. And then we put this back and we advance to year two and we're ready to start. The, oh, uh, actually, first thing I should have done, gone down the row here. I do get a point for that because it's in that point spot. If I had more, I'd get more points for each one. So, um, that uh, is that. All right. So on to year two. 
Okay, at the beginning of year two, I'm thinking about expanding my colony board. I've got two wood and I can use this gold as a grain. And I think that's probably in my best bet here. So go ahead and turn in the gold and the two wood. And I'm gonna take one of these large tiles. I've got three, four, and five that's going to be activated. So I'm thinking I might put something here to, uh, so I can activate both four and five, and then these also activate. So fours and fives are big rows for me and columns. Um, conquistador and wood would be nice. Maybe something along these lines. It's really, I could do this as well. What do I want to do? This and this. None of these do anything as far, well, if I do this, there is a potential end game scoring of the largest set of like buildings. So here I'd have two mountains together and two forts together. So I think that makes the most sense. I'm gonna go ahead and place that right there, okay? So that was the first thing I did. Now I wanna start gathering some resources so that I can potentially ship as well. Um, let's see here. Three, there's not a whole lot happening in three. I'd like to get some coins so that I can, because one of the things you can do is you can spend coins to move the pips of the dice up or down. So if I wanted to, if I use the three and I wanted to activate the four, if I had a coin, I could spend one to make that a four. Right now, I don't have any coins. I could sell this gem to get me two. I don't know that I need to do that just yet. Um, let's do this instead. Let's activate this five. Or do I want to activate this five? No, I'm going to activate this five. Religion will go up one, okay? I, if I had a grain or a gold, I could pay it to move up, but I don't. Now I get a wood. Now I get a grain. It would have helped a moment ago, but you have to go in order and a conquistador action. And then I get another wood, all right? And that stays right there. I could immediately spend that two wood if I wanted to, to get one of these small tiles, and that may actually be uh, a good idea. Um, let's see here. I might do that. I think what I'm gonna do is spend, oh, I can actually spend the two wood and the grain for a large tile. That might even be better. Let's do it. Building up our board, two wood and a grain, and we'll get a large tile. And let's maybe do this, although that would leave a blank spot there. Maybe this is better. Let's do that. Okay, so we did that. All right, now, yeah. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do now is activate my four blue die. So I'm gonna get a grain and a sugar and I'm gonna get two conquistador actions, one and two, it's gonna give me a gold. All right, and I'm one away from being able to get my five points at the end of this year. All right. Um, now, do I wanna start thinking about shipping? I need to get some coins if I'm gonna do that. Um, I could ship this if I had some coins. So I'm thinking, it. do I want to go ahead and sell this to get two coins? Let's do that. I'm going to sell this gem. I don't know if this is smart. I could say that about every single thing I do, but that's all right. I'll get two coins. Um, so now what I might want to do is, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to spend one of these coins to activate this shipping building. All right, I'm gonna ship this sugar and grain. The end of the game, that's gonna get me three points. All right, I take that now. I'm gonna spend one coin because I now have this ability and I'm gonna put this in a different row here. I'm gonna put this, do I wanna put it? Uh, I'll, actually, I have no choice. I have to, because I'm only spending one coin, I can only, you have to spend a coin for every uh, column you're putting it in or every uh, row. So I'll put it right there. All right, so I've done that, 
and now a new shipping tile is going to come out. It's two grain. All right. And let's see here. Now I've got this five. I've got the three. I've got the four. Let's do this. Let's activate this three column. I get a wood. I get a religion, which gives me a th the third blue die, which gives me another five. And a monk. This monk I'm going to go ahead and place on the endgame scoring here, which is basically the largest groupings. All right. Um, so that was that. Now I get a wood, and that's going to stay right there. Okay. I could now get another large tile if I wanted to use that as a grain. All right. Um, I've got the four here that I can activate. I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to use this four. I'd love to activate a shipping. Although, I, eh, there's really not all that much there to ship. Um, so let's use this four. Or do I want to get a tile before I do that? Let's do that. I feel like I need to be building up my board. So there's two wood. This gold's going to be used as a grain. I'll get one more big tile here. And I can do religion here. I can do another gem. I've got two religion spots there. Although right now I've got as many uh, of the dice as I'm going to get. Do I really need more religion? I would get more monks, which could be potentially useful if I went here. Um, or I could do this, which would allow me to trade a sugar for three happiness. Or I can do this, which would just give me a happiness or give me a gem. So also give me another person. Yeah. Well, gems can give you money. Well, let's go ahead and do this. I don't know if this is the best tile, but that's the one I'm doing, by golly. All right. Um, so let's activate. I know I'm going to use one of these fives in a, in a column instead of a row. Um, let's do this. Let's activate one on the row first. Get a happiness, which is a victory point, basically and get a wood and a conquistador. All right, that gets me past the spot I need there. All right, now let's spend this five in the row because of my ability, or column I should say, get a religion, get a wheat or a grain and a conquistador. Grain and conquistador, which gives me a gold, which is splendid. Now I've got this four I could use to get two gems. So I'll do that. Gem here, gem there. Two gems. All right. And I think I'm probably going to be, probably going to be retiring at this point. The question is, do I want a ship? Do I want coins? Do I want religion? I don't think I want a conquistador at this point. I don't think I want religion. So I'm looking at coins, shipping, or a road tile. A road tile would be nice here. It would finish that road, finish this row out. I keep saying row, I mean column. It'd finish this column out. And get me closer to filling, finishing out this as well. Um, end of game scoring. I'm trying to think of how many points you get for, yeah, it's only, you only get points for colonists. So if I filled out this column, I would only get one point because I'd get, I'd have one colonist on it. I don't know that it's worth it. I get more points, I think, by shipping. So I'm going to go ahead and ship. Let's ship two grain, this grain, and that gold will be used as a grain. And then this is going to have to go into my happiness spot there because I don't have a coin to uh, move it. And now that's good. I can use that to ship those on my next turn. All right. So that goes there. So now, since I've retired, I go ahead and get my income here. This goes there. I get two happiness points there. Let me get this three and trade in a one. All right. So I've done that. Now we uh, do our 
Next end of year scoring, I am past the uh, second tree here, so I'm going to get five for that. Three, four, I'd love to take that hundred, but that wouldn't be fair. Three, four, and five. Okay, so I've done that. And now the uh, coins go back to the general supply. The dice are going to get re-rolled. We've got one, three, and five. I'm going to re-roll my blues. Five, five, and two. I keep rolling fives on my blue dice. This conquistador goes back to the beginning. That's going to go up to the next round there. These are going to go away. And I'm going to bring out five new of each, which are the last five. All right, and straighten up my board a little bit, and then we are ready for the third and final year. All right, here we go, third year. I feel like I've got a lot to do to uh, reach the 100-point threshold. <laughs> I think that that is uh, already uh, pretty much uh, given that that's not going to happen, but hey, you never know. Let's, uh, let's try to make something happen here. All right, so I've got dice to, uh, to use. I wish I had a four because that has a lot of stuff going on there. Maybe I can get some gold and, and, and do that. So um, first thing that I might want to do is I might want to go ahead and ship. Do I want to ship that? No, 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 no. I think I need to get... Oh, this needs to move back here. I need to get some money. I do need to get... So let me go ahead and sell... A gem. I've been very, very money poor here. All right. Um, let's see. There's no way for me to get money on my board that uh, some some spots have uh, money on them printed. Like this one, for example, has two coins there. I could potentially get that on my board here at some point. Um, Let's see. Okay. Do I want to go ahead and use this? Let's go ahead and use this. Okay. It's going to give me a wood. It's going to give me a religion, which is going to give me a monk. This monk I will use to... Right now I've got two connecting there. I could potentially get a couple of points that way. I'm looking at endgame scoring. Buildings connected to my, right now I have one, two buildings connected to the, uh, to my town hall on an un un uninterrupted, no, three. One, two, three, is that, count? yeah. That's connected, that's connected, that is connected. That, oh, that is connected as well. So maybe I want to go there. Let's go ahead and put this right here. Buildings connected to my uh, town hall. All right. Now I do a conquistador action, which moves that up. I get a happiness VP, and that is going to stay right there. That was the last activated building. Okay. Now... I have a couple of coins that I could use to manipulate some things if I need to. All right. Do I go ahead and start doing these fives? I already have wood. So let's go ahead and spend these wood to get one of these tiles on the board. Um, I've got three... Uh, I'm going to be activating the column of three. So I could potentially put that there. I am going to be doing five as well, so I can potentially put that there. That might not be a bad thing. Um, although I also have, let's see, I've got three mountains connected there. I've got two... Um, forest. I could put another forest there to make that, but but I don't think it's ever going to get bigger than three. So I don't think I even need to 
I don't think that's going to happen. So maybe let's just go ahead and do this because I'm going to be activating three here soon. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then maybe I'll go ahead and activate that three right now. So I'll activate this. I'll get two coins. Then I'm going to get a wood. I'm going to get a religion action. I'm going to get a conquistador action and it's going to stop right there. All right. I still have a ways to go to get those six points. All right. This one is not doing a whole lot for me. You can't wrap it around. I'd love to be able to wrap it around with one coin to get to the six, but to use this one as a six, I'd have to spend five coins, and I don't think that that's a good use of my resources there. So, let's do this. I feel like I need to be shipping a little bit. Um, yeah, let's activate this shipping. Well, do I have to activate it? I, can, I don't have to use a coin. I can just use this to do it. I'll do that. I'll ship out this wood. Okay. This is going to go into my conquistador spot, which helps me get closer to completing this column. I bring out a new one, a gold and a wood. That gives me four points at the end of the game. And here I get a wood and that stays right there. All right. So we've got that one done. Now I've got all kinds of fives. Now that's not bad for this because I do have a lot going on there, but I think I'm going to end up spending some gold to, or some coins to manipulate that a little bit. All right. Um, I'd like to ship again. I'd like to ship that quite a bit. So how do I get a gold? I get a gold by moving a conquistador. So let's do that. Let's do a conquistador action. Let's use this five. It's going to get me two woods and a conquistador. All right. Two woods, which maxes me out there. A conquistador action, which gives me that gold, which I would like to use to ship. All right. Let's do that right now. Okay. So I'm going to spend this coin to activate this building. Shipping. I'm going to do this gold and wood. And I'm going to spend one coin using that ability to put it right up there. So now this gives me a full row, and I think that's going to give me three points at the end of the game, which is not, you know, not great, but it's not horrible. A gem and a sugar. So if I can get a sugar, I can ship those out too, potentially. All right. I need to move the Conquistador one, two, three more spots to be able to get um, my six points. Is there a way to do that? One, two... Yeah, there is a way to do that, I think. Yep, I can do that. All right, so I'm going to spend a coin here to make this five a four. All right, so now I get a gem. I get two conquistadors and a wood. One, two, and that's going to get me a gold as well. And then I get another gem, which maxes me out on three gems. All right. And then what I'll likely do is use this. Hmm. Let's go ahead. Do I want to ship again? I'd like to be able to do that one, but I don't have a sugar right now. Is there a way to get sugar? If I do this, I can get a sugar and a conquistador, but then, oh, and then I could ship with that. No, I couldn't because I'd have to spend that one to turn that into a four. Hmm. I don't think I'm going to be able to ship that out. I could ship this gem for sure. And maybe I want to do that. I might want to do that. Actually, what I might want to do, let's, let's sell this gem for two and see if I can use these coins to start manipulating some things. So I sold that gem for two. Now I can start moving this around. Um, I'd like to get a sugar so that I can then ship. Okay, so I'll spend one of those coins I just got. Turn this into a four. All right, now I'm getting a grain and a sugar. Grain, oops, and sugar. All right, and I'm getting a conquistador, which I needed to get over that spot. So that's done. And now I've got my two coins left that I can use to ship because now to activate a building, it's gonna cost me two. I'll go ahead and activate this building. 
and I'm going to ship this sugar and gem and that goes into the conquistador spot right there and we're going to replace that wood sugar and gem that would have been nice and now I'm going to see if I can manipulate some other stuff I don't think there's any way for me to get can I get the sugar I need three coins to be able to activate this. So I think what I'm going to do is sell. Yeah, okay. I need to get three coins. So if I sell my basic resources, I need to save a one, one wood. So I'll spend two wood and a grain to get three coins. All right, three coins. I'm going to use those three coins to activate this building, which gives me a grain and a sugar. Oh, but I think that I've messed up because I don't think that I'm going to be able to now ship. <laughs> yeah, because I think I needed to be able to activate a shipping which is going to take four and I don't even have one that I can activate so that that wasn't too smart but that's right at least you saw how it works I don't think that that was uh, that certainly was not a uh, an ideal move on my part I was trying to think of a way to get the things to do it and then I wasn't realizing hey I have to be able to ship that stuff once I get it and right now I've got no way to ship it so there you saw an example of a very very not ideal move now do I want to go ahead and try to fill up spots on the board while I can. Now that I've done all this, I might want to do that. Um, I could spend um, two wood and a grain to potentially fill up this. Um, yeah, it might be the way to go. I could also fill up this one and hmm. yeah let's do this okay two wood a grain i'm going to use that gold as a as a wood all right and let's go ahead and get one of these with the two colonists so that we'll go oh i could ship here so maybe i don't want to do that two wood i used a wood a grain and a gold right I believe I did because I wanted to have that yeah okay so I can ship here that's that's what I had forgotten okay so now I'm not gonna do that I'll go ahead and I'll retire by shipping that that was I, I thought that I had a plan but uh, I had forgotten it in the in the course of thought so this uh, gem this sugar and this wood and hopefully I didn't botch the resources I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference to be honest with you and then this is gonna go into the conquistador spot. I have no goal to move it. All right, this gets replaced, although it's immaterial at this point. All right, now I get my income here. I'm gonna get two coins for that. Three conquistador action, one, two, and three. Gives me a gold. I'm gonna get one religion action and two VPs. Let's go ahead and take this three and I'll put a one back. All right, so now we've done that. And now, uh, end of year, we are going to take off the, well, first I'll do the Conquistador. I am well past that, so I'm going to get six points for that. Three and three is six. All right. Um, conquistador goes back to its starting spot. Not that it really matters. These are going to all get removed off the board. It might help for end game scoring, be able to see what's what. Get these coins off of here. Oopsie. I'm having difficulties. All right. Um, and then we... Do, uh, okay. All right. So let me just take a pause and I'll start getting ready for the final scoring here. Okay. So I'm just going to go step by step on the end game final scoring here. 
Uh, the first thing you do is you go through your resources and coins, and you sell your remaining resources for coins. And so this gives me two, four, and one, so five coins. All right, three, four, and five. And then you're gonna get uh, a point for um, every three coins, I believe. Let's see here. One point for each three, three coins. So I get two points because I had seven coins. So two points is gonna be added to my total. My pretty pathetic total, I believe, but we'll see. Um, now, colonists on road spaces. You look for completed rows and columns and you're gonna get one point for every colonist on a completed uh, row or column. So this one is completed. I get one point there. Um, the, I get one, uh, one, two here, so that's three total, and another one here for four. So that's pretty awful. One, two, three, four. Yep. Uh, all right, so I'll get my four points for that, such as they are. Okay, then uh, we go to the monks. I get two points for that monk. I don't believe that I get these three points here. It doesn't say explicitly in the rule book, but that's... I, 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 it doesn't seem right. That's one I just got at the beginning of the game. I didn't have to do anything for it, so I'm not going to score that. All right. Um, then we go to the bishop tiles, and you first are going to lose two points. So there's four points right off the bat that I'm going to throw away. All right. And now I score. So two points for every building on an uninter uninterrupted road connected to my town hall and it says that adjacent buildings count. So here's my town hall. So two, four, six. Oh no, that's not, that doesn't count because it's not uninterrupted. So two, four, this one counts, six and eight because this one counts, I believe. So double checking that. This would count two, four, six, Eight. Oh, and that would count too, also. Ten, right? Two, four, six, eight, and ten. I believe that would count. So I got ten points off of that one. And here, two for the largest contiguous uh, type of building. So uh, it looks like I'm going to get six points for this right here because I've got three of the uh, mountains together. I don't think I have anything else that's uh, larger than that. I had two forests together here. Uh, so six points. All right. Let's see if I can find a couple of threes here. There's three and three for that. Okay. So you've done that. And then harbors, you get three points per set. I have one set here, so that's three points for me there. I'll take that. And then you flip over the shipment tiles and you're going to get points for those. So let's see what I get here. I get some decent points here anyway. I don't think enough to get me anywhere near the 100 point threshold, but let's see. So four and one is five and five is 10, 14, 17, 19, 21, 10, 20, and a one. So let's see what my final score is here. All right, flipping these happy faces over. All right, so. 30, 33, 36, 39, 40, 50, 60, 63, 64, 65, 66 points. Well, that's better than uh, the last time I played, 66 points. Um, it says here in the solo game, 100 points or more is a win. And then there's some different achievements you can try to, to score here. 28 points or more from colonists. I certainly didn't get that. Uh, four sets of shipment tiles. That didn't happen. 30 points or more from bishop's requirements. I don't think I got... No, I didn't get that. An unbroken chain of one terrain type from west to east or north to south. Nope. A total of 120 points or more, not a chance. And a total of 150 points or more, no dice. So not only did I not get the 100 point threshold, I also did not achieve any of these achievements, but I had a good time.
And so that's the number one achievement, I think, that uh, the game is probably looking for. And so hopefully you got a pretty good idea of how the game is played. Uh, I apologize if there are some uh, rules errors. Um, I didn't notice anything while I was playing, but there's certainly some possibilities uh, uh, that I uh, muffed a few things up. This is uh, only my second go through on this. Uh, my score did improve quite a bit. I got 45 points in my first game, uh, 66 in this game. So um, that's not uh, that's not too bad. 66. I feel like with the uh, a few more games, I could I could do better. I certainly need to do better on end game scoring. I think that's a big part of it. Cl maybe fi finishing out rows. I botched that last turn where I was trying to do that shipping. I, I know I did that very very inefficiently. But uh, anyway, there seems like to, uh, there's a lot of ways to manipulate the dice and and. Uh, uh, pretty solid dice placement worker type of a game. So hopefully you got a pretty good idea how to play. I thank you so much for your time as always, and I hope you have a great day.